Well, I'm happy to say both elevators are done. That whole process is 100% complete. So I get to move on now to what in some ways is one of the more exciting parts of the tail assembly. Um, so far, it's just been putting together pieces for the tail. Now I get to move on to actually building the tail itself. So I'm kind of excited about that. So while I get busy starting on that, you guys get to take a look at how I finished putting these guys together. Enjoy. So I know this isn't the first time I've said it, and it certainly won't be the last, but uh, made a little mistake, as happens. I had to countersink all these holes for the uh, trim tab hinge, and that all went fine. It was perfect. And then I decided to <laughs> just deburr the backs of them just a little bit. I thought maybe it was a little bit, a little bit rough back there. Unfortunately, it's really thin material. And then after you've countersunk it, um, if you deburr it, even one small little pass on the back side of the hole, you enlarge the holes. So unfortunately, that wasn't good. So my choices there were, you know, I could, I could upsize the rivet, put oops rivets in there um, that have a larger shank than they're supposed to versus the size of the head. But in the end, I just decided to replace the part. Um, so that's kind of the lesson here. Mistakes are going to happen. You're going to mess things up on the airplane. You can always get a replacement part for it. For the most part, most of the parts, the small ones, they're pretty cheap. I mean, this is, you know, I think $12 or something like that from Van. So it just slows the process down a little bit. You've got to order it and then wait for it to come in. But fortunately, this was the trim tab hinge. And so I could go ahead and continue working on the rest of the elevator while I was waiting for this to come in because all the elevator parts, I can get those pretty much completely assembled and then build the trim tab separately. So not really the end of the world, but I uh, got the part in. And so now I can just get back to work with it. So for the second time, I click the aft half of the hinge for the trim tab to the trim tab spar and then countersink the holes for flush rivets. With that complete and after priming the replacement spar, it's time to build the trim tab. So first I Clico the spar to the bottom skin for the trim tab, along with the trim tab horns, and then rivet all of that together. All right, so it's been a couple days. Everything has had time to set up. So today I'll take the trailing edges apart, we'll take those Clicos back out, and then inside of there we'll start to install these trailing edge ribs. Uh, with some tank sealant. We'll do the same thing here on the trim tab itself. Um, basically everywhere that we had masked it off from the priming, we'll go ahead and install these. So we put about a 1 32nd real thin film of tank sealant on these guys to help them adhere in place there. Do the same thing on the trailing edges. And then in the case of the trailing edges, we go ahead and we just Clico those back together. We'll put a weighted board on that and then we'll let that set aside for a few days. As far as the trim tab itself, a little bit different. Once we put these guys in there with a tank sealant, we'll actually rivet the other skin on here, and then the whole thing gets turned upside down, and again, a weighted board is put on place. That extra weight just ensures that you've got good contact between the skins and your ribs, and then you let that cure for several days. Uh, in a few days, we'll come back and actually work on riveting the trailing edges together on these guys, closing those up for good, getting the leading edges rolled. And then we'll install the trim tab motor back here in the access door. And that should finish up the elevators. So almost there, <laughs> moving on. Before I start bonding the ribs with sealant, I'll first bond the trailing edge for the trim tab to its bottom skin. So as I did with the elevator trailing edges, I apply 3M tape to both sides of the trailing edge piece, remove the protective layer from the bottom, and Clico it together to allow the bottom adhesive to bond to the skin. I'll let that sit for a few minutes and start installing the ribs in the elevator trailing edges. As I mentioned, you don't want any more than about a 1 layer of sealant. 
So I push a little out of the tube and spread a thin layer with a popsicle stick on all sides. Then it's just a matter of lifting up the skin and inserting them into place. It's very sticky stuff and locks in place on the bottom as soon as you set it down. So after a little adjusting to make sure it's in the right spot, I move on to the next one. Then Clico the edge back together and set a board on top. Once I get these all complete, I'll add a little weight to the boards as well. For the trim tab, I open it back up and install the coated ribs. After I click with the top back on, I remove the protective cover from the 3M tape on the top side a little at a time as I click with the trailing edge of the top skin in place. And then finally I rivet the leading edge of the top skin to the spar. The trailing edge and sides are left clicoed for now while the trim tab is turned over and has a weighted board applied. And now I let all that set up for a few days. After which, I'll be able to close out the trailing edges. Alright, so when it comes to closing up the trailing edge on the trim tab as well as the rest of the elevator, it's a similar process to what we did closing up the trailing edge of the rudder, but the edge is a little bit different. So with the rudder um, and all the other trailing edges on this airplane, they all taper to a nice point. You can see here with the trailing edge of the trim tab as well as the rest of this, it actually comes and gets a little bit wider at the end. So it goes to a point, then it kind of widens back out. So it's just a little bit different. But as far as setting the rivet, it can be a very similar process if you want to go ahead and just buck the rivets down. You initially set the rivets just a little bit down, uh, just enough to expand them into the hole and hold in place while you get all the clecos out. Then you're going to come back to it and you're going to basically back rivet the rest of them. Uh, initially you start perpendicular and then as the rivet head squeezes down you kind of roll onto it so that it ends up flush with the surface at the end and fills up the hole. The other way that you can do this is there is a dimple, dimple die set that's specifically made for the elevator on the RV-14. It's the only thing it's used for. So I went ahead and bought it, not knowing if I'd want to use it or not. It turns out when I did the rudder, I didn't have any problem setting the rivets the way it's described in the instructions. So I didn't think it was all that difficult, but I had already gone ahead and bought this anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and try it out. The way these are set up, there's actually about a four degree slope on each one of these. And so that pretty much matches the little bit of a slope that happens here on the back of the trailing edge. So the idea is when you squeeze this down, you end up with exactly the same angle as that surface. So it just makes the process go a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Um, but I definitely, after having done the rudder, I don't think it's necessary. But since I've got it, I'm going to go ahead and use it and we'll see how it does. As you can see, the shank of the rivet will never completely fill the dimple, but it is flush. So Vans recommends putting the manufactured head on the top of the elevator and the shank on the bottom where no one will see it. So I move on from there and set all the other rivets in the trailing edge. All right, well, that came out really good. Um, so what do I think? Um, I think the tool works really well. Uh, the dimple die produces a pretty nice result. Don't think I could have done any better um, back riveting it. And it's definitely a lot more consistent. And I guess 
in many ways the process goes a little bit faster. So for $36, yeah, I guess it's worth it. But uh, certainly could be done without it. But um, yeah, I think it made just an easier process. Last step here is to close up the ends of the trim tab using some blind rivets. And then you have a completed trim tab for the elevator. Next step is to start closing up the trailing edges of the elevators. In the instructions, Vans has you leave the 3M tape cover on the top side of the trailing edge wedge while the ribs set up. I'm not sure why because they don't have you do that on the trim tab. It's not a big deal, but with the ribs solidly bonded to the skins, it's a little tricky getting the tape cover removed. Definitely would have been easier to have removed this when we put the ribs in with the tank sealant. Anyway, with that out of the way, I put Clecos back in, take a few minutes to put the final rivets between the skins and the edge ribs, and then set the trailing edge rivets, just like I did for the trim tab. After a test fit for the trim tab, it's time to wire up the trim tab servo and get it installed. The servos get mounted inside of the access door, which I put together while waiting for the ribs to set up. The wires are fed through a hole on the side, and then the servo is riveted to the structure. The arm is connected to the back of the servo, and the other end will connect to the trim tab horn to actually move the trim tab. The servo motor will connect to the electrical system using a Molex connector, so the first thing I need to do is add some micro Molex pins to the wires and insert them into one end of the Molex connector. If you're like me and you haven't done a lot of aircraft wiring, uh, the EAA has one of their Sport Air workshops dedicated to this task. It's available as an in-person weekend session or as an online webinar with, with a practice kit that you can purchase to follow along at home. While I haven't watched the whole thing yet, I did get some tips on crimping these Molex pins from it. Steinair also has some pretty good avionics and wiring videos available as a resource on YouTube. So with that all done, the manufacturer of the servo says that you can test it with a 9-volt battery. The gray and white wires control the motor. The other wires will connect to position indicator and the trim control switch in the cockpit later on. So to test it, you simply connect the pins attached to the white and gray wires to the battery. With the white to positive and the gray to negative, the servo turns in one direction and then reversing that connection reverses the direction. Once the connections check out, it's time to install the servo assembly into the elevator. And connect the other end of the arm to the horn. And then, a full test of the servo and the trim tab. A very satisfying moment. The second to the last step is to roll the leading edges. The instructions say to use a stick or pipe with a 3 quarter to 1 inch diameter. And that may have worked well on some of the older kits, but I found that I need just a little bit bigger here to get the bend right. And I've heard the same thing from other builders. 
So I'm initially starting the bend close to the front spar with a 1 inch PVC pipe, which has an outside diameter of about 1.3 inches. I maintain downward pressure as I start the bend so as not to create a bend line along the edge where the skin is riveted to the spar. Then I come back and roll the outermost edge with a 3 quarter PVC pipe, which has just a little bit over a 1 inch diameter on the outside. Then it's just a matter of inserting the Clecos and pulling the final rivets in the elevators. The final step is to attach the counterbalance weights to the tips of the aptly named counterbalance ribs. So the bolt holes get final drilled. Some material is removed from the top and bottom of each. and then they're bolted in place. And that, my friends, completes the construction of the final control surface for the tail of my airplane. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, uh, it really helps out the channel. If you enjoy it, give it a like, and um, tell your friends about it if you think there's someone out there who'd like to watch the channel as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.